The Cosmic 7-99 run is a feat for even the most skillful of players. To master this, you must conquer 117 levels, 8 different worlds, and 2 entirely different game modes within the game itself. You can choose to conquer this mode seated or non-seated and gives the player a feeling that most other games cannot produce. Getting to 7-99 is not for the faint of heart and takes a matter of resilience and pride in oneself to accomplish. Have you completed the Cosmic Ocean or are you on the way to completing this extreme challenge? Oh Derek, where have we all gone wrong? Well, if you are here for either of those reasons, stay tuned and take in all the information needed to conquer the Cosmic Ocean and become one with the stars. And before the video begins, make sure to squeeze the juice out of that subscribe button and also like the video so that I can keep producing videos similar to this. From the bottom of my heart, you are really, truly helping if you do that. Do you have what it takes to conquer the Cosmic Ocean? Let's get started and find out. My name is Juicy Absolute. I stream on Twitch at twitch.tv slash juicy underscore absolute underscore double zero, and I'm a trophy hunter with 53 current platinum trophies. One of those being Spelunky 2, and I've also chosen to be one with the constellations and have completed my very own 7-99 run in this game. I have also 100%ed games such as Super Meat Boy, The Soul Series, Hollow Knight, and have completed one life mode on Ori and the Blind Forest. Out of all the accomplishments, my 7-99 run is definitely within my top 3 gaming accomplishments ever, and I couldn't be more proud of the time that I dedicated into this game myself. Between this and Super Meat Boy, 7-99 stands as one of my greatest feats in gaming, and will probably stay like that for a while, and I'm here to tell you why that is, and go over some main aspects of the game that can push you to the limits that may be outside of your perceptual capabilities. I've left timestamps in the description of all the topics I will be assessing in the video itself, so feel free to use those accordingly. I like to think of the Cosmic Ocean as the second mode of the game, and also the worst mode of the game in terms of untimely, unfortunate deaths. The mode is laid out like a Pac-Man stage. You have one giant map, and it reoccurs over and over if you travel far enough in any direction. With this mode, there is an infinite border system that allows you to reach the right side of the map from the left side, and vice versa, adding extreme difficulty to the layout of the mode itself. As enemies and items can fall infinitely within the border and place you into hitstun for your untimely demise. Apart from the borders, the Cosmic Ocean has 8 cosmetic layouts to randomly grant you on any particular level. Within the 94 levels presented to you, any level theme can randomly appear. And yes, the Cosmic Ocean is the final area of the game, with 94 levels of extremely tough design, so you may want to grab a little wine for the mode itself. Actually, that would probably impair your performance even more. Forget I said that. You will need to stay sober and fully focused if you plan to take your spot in the constellations. The name of the game is to collect three jellyfish eggs and make your way to the end door. Once you collect all three, the mother jelly, who will initially be chilling at the door, will then pursue you until you enter the exit in which she fled, therefore bringing you to the next level. However, there is a pressure to complete the level fast, as an extra celestial jelly will appear and pursue you after three minutes on any particular map, very similar to the ghost in the first mode of the game. One of the perks of the base game is the system in place for curing poisons and curses. These do not apply in this mode, as the pets and the elixirs do not exist in the Cosmic Ocean, and you are left with an untimely fate of death if this happens to you along the way. A Kapala is a necessity, as building your health with the blood of your enemies is going to save you an immense amount of pain and anguish throughout your journey. It will take years to master the fact of not getting hit in the Cosmic Ocean, so Kapala is your best friend in this case. You can always get a Kapala by entering Madame Tusk's palace and killing and sacrificing all of the guards on the altar within the area. And that's the gist of how the Cosmic Ocean is laid out, as well as some necessities to carry with you to these 94 levels of pure hell. The Cosmic Ocean is separated into 8 different select stage themes. Those stages consist of the 8 stages within the game itself, excluding 3-1. The stages include the Dwellings, Volcana, Jungle, Tide Pool, Temple, Ice Caves, Neo Babylon, and the Sunken City. The way these stages are placed together are within the theme of the Cosmic Ocean, of course. So even a stage like the Dwellings is significantly harder because of the large falls and the Celestial Jelly. Just be thankful there is no temptation to rob a shopkeeper and blindly fail. From easiest to most difficult, these stage themes certainly have qualities about them that make them slightly better or slightly worse. Let's begin with the easiest, that being the Dwellings. The Dwellings level is as calming as waking up in the morning before your alarm goes off. We all can dream, right? There are not many things that can truly disrupt your runs here. 
probably the most difficult being the horn lizards, and if you've been playing this game enough to get to the cosmic ocean, you really shouldn't have a problem with this. <clears throat> get good, get good. The arrow traps can cause a bit of a nuisance, I suppose, but just be careful crossing the infinite border and you should be okay. <clears throat> get good, <clears throat> get good. No poison, no curses, truly paradise. Moving on, ice caves is the next easiest stage you want. The most dangerous part of the ice caves levels are the spikes, and as long as you fall on top of the yetis, they can't toss you around like a 7 month old baby playing with their favorite signature teddy bear. I honestly don't really see this level being much of a problem to anyone, especially if you have spike shoes. The spike shoes add traction while you're on the ice, so you can't even slip. Pray for 99 levels of this stage, because up next we have Volcana, and this level can be a bit trickier, but if you follow the strategy of working from top to bottom, you'll be better off. You see, Volcana has the spike ball trap. It's the trap that looks like a mace that falls on you anytime you're under it. I've made the mistake of working from the bottom to the top on this level, and getting crushed by this trap along the way, but working the opposite, you shouldn't have an issue with the camera pan. Another big bummer is the lava. Lava, lava, lava everywhere. And yes, it's an insta-kill. Yeah, we can't all be Einstein. Avoid the lava and you should be golden. If you are crossing the infinite border, you should probably watch out for the infinite falling cauldrons from the flying imps. But again, if you're well adapted to how the cosmic ocean runs, any of these issues are minor compared to the next levels mentioned. The next up being the sunken city. This stage gets a little more daunting, and you may hear yourself screaming at the television like an 8 year old boy who doesn't get that fire truck that he wanted on Christmas morning. But it can't all be rainbows and gumdrops. The Sunken City is a pretty calm level, excluding the sneaky poison arrows, the pink blocks, the frog traps, oh, and the water, two hours later, the fire frogs, and we may as well add everything else in the level too. And this is the mediocre level. This is the level that is 50% hard and 50% easy, according to the list of levels, and it's still terrifying. Working from top to bottom is a must for each level. Watch for arrows, as they can perma-poison you for the rest of the game. The rest is up to your skill level, and nobody has skill in this f***ing game. We're all f***ed. We're all f***ed. Never would I ever pray for a Neo Babylon level, but I'd hope for it next. Why would I place this before Tidepool? Easy answer. No Zhangxi's and no poison here. Neo is very chaotic. UFOs, force field traps, laser traps, spark traps, and tight corners. This level is not for the faint of heart. You will see yourself dying on this level sometimes more often than the harder levels listed here. And that's mostly because of the tight spaces and traps that can kill you faster than beating Dr. Robotnik on Green Hill Zone on your 1000th playthrough of Sonic the Hedgehog. God, that game was good. Up next, you guessed it, Tide Pool. Tide Pool is a mysterious and deceiving level. You see, it appears easy when playing certain parts of it, but come into contact with Jiangxi's and Poison Arrows, which you will, and you will be in for a hell of a time. Not to mention the Pangxi that spurts out poison above them, but that will be the least of your worries. The Jiangxi's are the absolute worst enemy in the game. They look like a Five Nights at Freddy's animatronic, where during the day, all innocent and playful, and at night, they kill you in your sleep. These enemies will knock you into everything imaginable. Spikes, the ledge, other enemies, other Jiangxi's, they will mistreat you, worse than a toxic relationship with your ex. Do me one favor, kill these enemies any chance you get. They've given me massive PTSD. But on top of that, poison arrows also come into play on this map, and levels that emit poison are the absolute worst, considering you can't heal poison at all here. And we save the two worst stages last. Let's begin with jungle. Okay, never go to jungle in the first part of the game. Why would you do that to yourself? You have the ability to get poisoned, the ability to get cursed, you can fall into spikes, there's webs that can slow you down, all the while you still have to get 3 jelly eggs and avoid the celestial jelly at the end. This level just has too much going on to concentrate on any one thing fully, and deserves a top spot on this list as a more difficult level. The worst enemy in this level is the witch doctor. To this day, I still don't completely understand this enemy fully. It carries a skull that circulates around its body that immediately curses you if touched by it, and sometimes it can do voodoo magic on you or it can lead you into getting stunned just because it can. Now I do say, is this the way you'd like to be treated? This enemy alone may just be the worst in the game. That is, until you reach Temple. 
Honestly, as stated before, why would you go to Temple in the base game? There is more going on here than in Jungle. Temple is the ninth circle of hell, the circle that even Satan himself is afraid of. You have the chance of getting poisoned by snakes, getting crushed by moving blocks, getting auto-cursed by cute cat mummies, getting something summoned at you by a sorceress, and probably the worst enemy in the level, the Necromancer. In these tight corridors, and the fear of getting crushed by blocks, the Necromancers will bring enemies back to life after you've killed them. That's a big hell to the knob for me, dog. I'd like my enemies to stay dead, please. The Necromancers can also summon enemies to come in and sh** on your day. But isn't that just the way the cookie crumbles in this game? It's a constant shit stew, so there's nothing new. Just another single hit run ender. There's nothing more beautiful. After all the enemies I've come into contact with in this game, I have three enemies that rise above and beyond. And yes, they've done their extra credit, they've gotten their golden stars, and influenced me that living in reality is much better than living in this video game with these enemies. Let's begin with the Zhangxis. By far, the worst enemy in the game. Why? They can't poison or curse you, so why Juicy? In the Cosmic Ocean, the way that the level design is laid out is much different than the base game. These enemies can knock you into the infinite border, hit stun you, and you can die from fall damage easily here. Not only that, they can also easily knock you into the poison trap, spikes, and any other deadly enemies on the map. They have a ridiculous amount of hit stun, and they are stupid. That is all. Next are the Witch Doctors. They're not as bad as they appear, but on a tight level like Jungle, they can lead to unfortunate and untimely insta-deaths. And they can cause you to lose hope in a run by cursing you down to 1 HP for the remainder of the run. I will cry to my mommy the next time this enemy messes with me. Speaking of mommies... Um, other type of mommy. Yes, we have the Mummy Cats, the true spawn of Satan. And again, the layout of the map contributes so much to why these things are as tough as they are. I've had these cats fall on me from above and insta-curse me for the rest of the game. I'd just rather not talk about it anymore. As you know, the Cosmic Ocean is laid out as a large stage that carries itself infinitely. One of the main strategies that I took under my belt is to navigate every level from top to bottom, especially if you are not familiar with it. The reason for this being that the camera is not panned out far enough to see much of what is above or below you. So the best advice I could give is that it's better to not know what is under you versus what is above you. What I mean by this is that the mystery of what is below you can catch you off guard, but you have an advantage of not conflicting with what is below you. However, for instance, if a spike ball trap was above you and you couldn't see it because of the camera zoom, it could crush you before it comes to the view of your camera. But same thing, if it was below you, you'd be able to see the top before running into it, better preparing you for the level itself. If you're unsure of the level, always start from the top and make your way left to right and right to left until you get to the bottom. To add to this, it would be ideal to seek out the exit first, then go after the eggs. You want to be able to have an exit plan before the last egg is popped, so that way navigating to the exit is a piece of cake. Learn to find all the eggs first, then pop them accordingly to the most complex position to the easiest position, in accordance to the exit. Learn which enemies to kill and which enemies to avoid, especially the dangerous ones. And it depends on other factors too. Are they close to an egg? Is it a tight space you need to get through? Are they guarding the exit? Will they have the influence in harming you attempting to navigate the stage? Will this enemy get in the way of killing other enemies? These questions need to be asked every time you approach an enemy. Most of the enemies you should just pass, but enemies conflicting with the details listed should be dealt with accordingly. The Cosmic Ocean is like a really slow solving Rubik's Cube. Certain tiny decisions can influence the colors lining up in a way that completes it. These are the micro decisions on passing some enemies and killing others. Take Vlad's cape with you over the jetpack. This may sound ridiculous at first, but hear me out. The jetpack can be very explosive against some enemies and settings. It's just not worth it to bring the jetpack if it can explode to a random touch at level 7-90, ruining your run because of a dumb mishap. With Vlad's cape, you can hover very easily throughout the level and not have to worry about explosions from the jetpack itself. And if the pack explodes and you survive, you cannot get it back. Whereas if you die with Vlad's cape, there are some occurrences where you can retrieve the cape for future use if you were successful with the onk skip. Do not open treasure chests and pots. Money isn't necessary in the Cosmic Ocean, so opening pots and chests can present you with a potential death if a dangerous thing is inside of them. Treasure chests can present bombs inside of them, and pots can present poison enemies, such as snakes and scorpions. It's best to always sneak past these. However, on the contrary, you always want to open crates. 
as these present you with a high chance of bombs and ropes. The bombs that don't blow up in your face, the bombs that you collect. These crates never have anything malicious within them, only dreams, not nightmares. Judge the stage when you enter. For instance, you need a lot more focus on a stage like Temple versus a stage like the Dwellings, so know the stage you're getting into and act accordingly towards the difficulty. You may have to take more risks on any particular level, but sometimes the greater risk, the greater reward. Back whip all enemies in Jelly Eggs. Back whipping enemies will present a larger hitbox on the back end of the whip versus the front. Therefore, it is to your advantage to back whip both the eggs and the enemies for your greatest chance of survival. The greater the hitbox, the greater chance of living. Use your bombs and ropes at times when you feel you should use them. 9 times out of 10, if you are smart about your bomb and rope usage, you will never run out of them by the end. Do not be stingy in this mode, I've made that mistake many times. Use them if you think it will assist you to an egg or the exit, even if that means using 10 bombs or ropes on any particular level. Remember, it's about you making it to the end, not your inventory. Take advantage of the level design. If there is an egg on the left side of the map, sometimes jumping from the right side of the map into the infinite border to the left side is your best plan. The same goes with up and down as well. Keep this in mind with level exits as the doors can sometimes appear on the outer portions of the map. It's best not to explore the center of the maps when you don't have to. In case you want to be one with the constellations, you have to know you'll be placing an immense amount of time and effort into this game, mastering even the smallest details along the way. To be completely honest with you, your experiences with past video games will certainly have an influence on how fast or slow this will take you. If you've played roguelikes before, you will be a bit better off on a mental note. If it isn't clear, there are 117 levels in Spelunky 2. If you die, you must reset to level 1 with no meta progressions and no updated abilities. No nothing. All you have is your poor little level 1 whip, which will remain level 1 whether you die or survive and your poor, defenseless little spelunker. Look how freaking cute they are, even moments before death. How humbling. In Spelunky 2, you will die many times. You will rage many times, and you will call your mommy and stress about it. Many times. There's no getting around it. Spelunky 2 is tough. Incredibly tough. Some would say, stupid tough. Are you sure you want to go through with it? There's still time to back out. Okay, good. You're still here. If you've overcome that last line, you must have extreme confidence in your ability. Great job. Now time to place it to the test. I'd say the number one emotional tool that you need during this game is resiliency. What I mean by this is that even if you die on 7-97 to something super silly, you can still prevail and go in next time with the same feelings towards the game. Resiliency. Basically, from start to finish, you have to keep a level head about the game itself. You cannot fear it, lose hope in it, lose passion in it, or lose time dedicated to it. You must have an intensity to prevail and see that any death within the game is simply trivial. See this game as an experience that once you learn something, it keeps adding onto your knowledge. You know, they say that this game doesn't carry through with meta progression, but you definitely carry meta progression with your mindset. Hmm, maybe we should confront the devs about this for calling it a roguelike. This game is more like a psychological rogue light with mental meta progression. But I digress. This game will test your controller from flying through the television screen. It will also cause nightmares to occur because you just can't get past a certain level or enemy. Your mind has to be resilient. You have to have the confidence to know that every death leads to psychological progression until you finally overcome. <coughs> Which you will, right? Heck, I believe in your journey. Comment below and fill me in on what you think it takes. Also, let me know of your highest level so far in this game. Maybe you've already gotten to be one with the constellations. I'd be interested in hearing how you made it. And there you have it. I wish you all the best in obtaining this gem of an achievement. I know that for me, it was well worth it. Would I do it again? Hmm, maybe in another lifetime. It seems like a once in a lifetime type of feat. That's a big hell to the gnaw for a second go at this challenge. It was entertaining, but sometimes too much fun can lead to a heap of trouble. So I'll count my blessings and accept that only one of these feats will be happening for me in the next 100 year lifespan. Yeah, that sounds pretty safe to say. Buena suerte to all you newcomers. And if you haven't already, squeeze the juice out of that subscribe button, comment below what you liked or disliked about the video, and drop a like. It helps so, so much. Happy spelunking. We shall unite again, and as always, stay juicy, stay happy, stay humble, and most importantly, 
stay positive. We'll catch you all next time.